HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus. This is the virus which causes AIDS, or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. HIV is a virus which is different from other viruses because it invades and attacks the immune system, which in time leads to the development of AIDS. HIV works by invading white blood cells known as T cells or CD4 cells, which are part of the immune system and used to fight off infection. In the final stages of the HIV infection, the number of T cells have been depleted to a level where the body can no longer fight off infections. During this stage, the patient is said to have AIDS. For, the, for those who are unaware they have HIV, this final stage may be the first time they experience any signs or symptoms of the disease. The time to progress from HIV to AIDS is different for each individual person and can range from a few years to over a decade. For individuals who know their status, they can delay the onset of AIDS with the use of antiviral medications. The Center for Disease Control in the United States estimates 1 million people are infected with HIV in the United States and that approximately 25% of these people are unaware they are infected. HIV Infective Process The free HIV virus will identify receptors on the surface of the host cells and attach. The specific receptors are known as CD4 receptors and the two cells of the immune system which have these CD4 receptors are the macrophages and the CD4 lymphocytes. After HIV has attached to the host cell, the virus can infect the host cell with its viral RNA. The first step after entering the host cell is to use the enzyme reverse transcriptase to change the viral RNA to DNA. This change is important because this is what allows the genetic information of the virus to be added to the host's DNA. The new genetic information from the virus in the form of the DNA is then transported to the nucleus of the host cell and prepared for incorporation into the host's DNA. The next enzyme to be used by the virus is known as integrase, and its function is to take the newly converted viral RNA and insert it into the host cell's DNA. With the viral DNA inside of the host cell's DNA, the host cell will start to produce new viral RNA. This new viral RNA is then used as a template to create new viral proteins and genetic information using the host cell's machinery. After the viral proteins are altered by the enzyme protease, they are assembled within the cell to form a new virus. The new virus must then escape the host cell to infect another host cell. The virus escapes by a process known as budding. The virus will move to the cell membrane and form a small pocket which will pinch off from the existing host cell. The new virus is then free to start the infective process in another host cell. Keep in mind in this graphic only one new virus is shown leaving the cell. However, in reality there are hundreds of viruses budding out of the host cell which compromises the integrity of the host cell membrane and leads to cell death. This is why the cells of the immune system decrease in number because the rate of new host cell production can no longer rejuvenate the number of host immune cells degraded by the HIV virus. How do people become infected with HIV? HIV cannot thrive outside the body, which means you cannot contract HIV by hugging, shaking hands, sharing food, or even casual kissing. People become infected with HIV in three main ways. Unprotected sex. This can be oral, anal, or vaginal intercourse sharing needles for IV drug use, mother to fetus transmission prior to birth or while breastfeeding. People at highest risk are those who use illicit IV drugs and steroids and share any of the supplies. This includes the needle itself and cotton or water used to clean the site of injection. Have unprotected sex of any kind, including oral, anal, and vaginal with multiple partners or anonymous partners. Having sex, again, any type of intercourse, for money. Diagnosis of hepatitis, tuberculosis, or any sexually transmitted disease. Blood transfusion recipients from 1978 to 1985. Having unprotected sex with anyone who answers yes to any of the above conditions. How can you protect yourself? First, the most effective way to avoid contracting HIV is not to use IV drugs and abstain from sexual intercourse. Even when a condom is used appropriately, it can slip or break and put its users at risk for contracting HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. If you choose to engage in sexual activity, you should always use a latex condom from start to finish. Some people are surprised to learn they can contract HIV from the pre-ejaculation fluid which some people are exposed to prior to applying the condom. Another important point is to never reuse a condom. Some reports have been made of simply washing out a condom and reusing it with the same partner or a new partner. This should never be done. 
Be sure to use a new condom from start to finish every time you engage in sexual activity. It is also important to use proper technique when applying a condom. Before the wrapper is opened, it should be inspected for any holes or damage to the outside which may indicate damage to the condom inside. If the outside wrapper is intact and within the expiration date, open the condom by gently pulling the side of the wrapper down. Do not use your teeth, scissors, knife, or other sharp objects to open the condom wrapper. Once the condom is out of the package and before you apply it to the penis, attempt to slightly unroll it. This action will allow you to decide which side will be placed to the outside. The condom should easily unroll when the correct side is facing outward. After determining the outside, place the condom on the tip of the penis and pinch the tip as it is rolled down over the erect penis. Pinching the tip to get rid of any air caught in the tip will help to keep the condom from rupturing. If a lubricant is desired, it must be a water-based lubricant. If the lubricant is not water-based, it will degrade the latex and lead to rupture of the condom. Water-based lubricants, such as lubricating jelly, are available at any pharmacy. Lastly, immediately after ejaculation, the penis should be withdrawn from the partner and the condom should be firmly held at the base. Hold the condom on the penis as it is withdrawn, as this will keep the condom from slipping off the penis and spilling its contents on the partner. If engaging in oral sex, it is important to remember to not let vaginal fluids or semen enter your mouth. For performing oral sex on the female, use a dental dam. Dental dams come in multiple flavors and colors and are sold at pharmacies or other specialty shops. The dental dam should be applied over the vagina and surrounding area from start to finish. The dental dam should not be reused or flipped over during use. For oral sex being performed on a male, there are many non-lubricated, flavored condoms available for use. As stated before, use proper technique for applying the condom and use it from start to finish. No exceptions. If IV drug use is part of your lifestyle, there are precautions you can take to decrease the risk of contracting HIV and other blood-borne pathogens such as hepatitis C. First, always use clean needles and never share your needles. In many communities, there are needle exchange programs where clean needles are provided in exchange for used needles. Ask about these programs and use them. Next, while preparing the site of injection, do not wash the area with water or cotton used by another person. These items could be contaminated by the other person and put you at risk for contracting HIV. After administering the injection, don't leave used needles laying around for other people to be accidentally stuck. If you think you have been exposed to HIV, you need to get tested. By knowing your status, you can begin taking control and make positive advancements for your future. Most HIV tests detect the presence of HIV antibodies produced by your body after being infected. Each person is different and the amount of time their body will take to produce enough antibodies for the HIV antibody test to detect them, so it is recommended to be tested three months after a possible exposure. Most people will develop antibodies within two to eight weeks, but some people can take as long as six months. This is why it is recommended to test at least three months and then again at six months to confirm results. Another possible test for HIV is the RNA test which detects HIV directly. The advantage of this RNA test is HIV infection can be detected nine to 11 days after infection as opposed to three to six months. However, this test is very expensive and not routinely done. 